Hi, I'm Daz. What have I got here? This is approximately 1938 Murphy uh, A46. Um, it's been sitting in this partly dissembled state in my bedroom for about four years and I'm fed up of waking up and looking at it so I think it's time to do something with it. Um, it's already partly dissembled. Here's the Slough speaker. It's a field energised one rather than a permanent magnet one. The grill cloth has in better days um, so not so good. There is some grill cloth with it I noticed that I must have purchased with some different sorts in the bag. So I'm not quite sure which would be the best one. I'm going to have to look up some pictures. I've got a manual downstairs for a 48 which is supposed to be similar and a diagram for this 46. Some of the valves I've taken out they seem to be a mixture of um, of types. There's some octal in here and also there's this British valve types. Some of the valves are already removed. Um, these two valves I couldn't get them out before so I'm going to have to put some penetrating oil on it to get them out. I think also it would be wise for me to check the wound components for continuity. There's a lot of rubber wiring and if I could just zoom in it's completely the rubber's coming off so that's going to have to be replaced. Um, so yeah, so I decided this would be the next project. Um, here's the uh, front of the case. I've got the glass that's already been removed. The case, well, that's not fantastic. Looks like someone's had a vase there, perhaps. But it's not too bad, there's a lot of scratches. Um, a lot of dust as well. <laughs> My lighting isn't perfect, I'm afraid to say in here, but it's not too bad. It hasn't got woodworm, that's something. Something you quite often find in this country, as things have got woodworm. Here's a close up of the chassis. Um, three tuning capacitors on this one. Just get the capacitor in shot. Um, there's two IF cans here. Is there three? Um, have to look at that. That one must be an aerial coil. Um, just looking at the diagram and just trying to figure it out. Um, one, two, no, only two IFs. One of these must be the oscillator, perhaps. Mm, there's a lot of tuning. It's a very complicated input circuit on this one compared to what I've seen before. Let's just turn it up the other way. Not breaking something. Oh my goodness. Ooh, it's got a best way up when you've got a widescreen camcorder but there's a cardboard box up here with wires going to it. I assume that's some sort of could be the smoothing capacitors it's cotton covered underneath that's not so bad um, let's zoom in a bit more Go over it. Oh, there we go. There's the box. Plenty of wax capacitors. Oh, not too many. Well, there's a few. This must be the some more of the input coils. There's two pole switch down here. Let's have a look. Go. Okay. Yeah, some more of the tuning coils. Now, it's quite complex actually. I'm surprised. I thought it would be more simpler. But uh, yeah, a lot of different 
um, types of valve holder. Right, I'm going to put some penetrating oil in, I think, so I can, and also into the valve caps um, of the mixer and the IF valve because um, they're definitely uh, definitely got a problem with removing them. So let's put some oil in those. To be honest, I don't like spraying this sort of stuff in, but I don't think. I got a lot of choice really because I've never had this where the the valve pins are sort of got stuck. There's slits in them, so hopefully this will um, penetrate. But I've got plenty of tissue down, so I don't want all oil in it everywhere. But hopefully this will just be able to pull the valve out without. Um, and then a sudden, it's suddenly coming out, leaving pins behind or flying off and breaking somewhere. But uh, yeah, that's getting done anyway. I've just uh, undone a screw holding this pack in. One of them was missing, but uh, yeah. What have we got? British Hunts. Is that Hunts? I think that's Hunts. Made by, yeah. Uh, red 8 microfarad, yellow 8, and green 4 microfarad. Working voltage 450, surge voltage 500. Black common. It's got cotton cables on it. Um, yeah, well, I don't see no reason why this couldn't come apart and put new capacitors in it so it keeps the uh, original look to it. I've got the chassis horizontal now. I wasn't sure that was a good idea, but it seems to sit okay. Um, I'll try getting those valves out shortly. Um, see if they'll come out without me breaking them. Now hoping the valve caps will come off. Oh, yeah, that's done its job. And this one, very gently. Yep, that's come off as well. Excellent. Next question is what about the valve itself? Oh yes. Excellent, that's worked. Oh very hard to read green writing. I think that's AC something, I'm not sure. Right, put that to the left. Hope I can get this one out. Oh, there we go. AC something, but I can't quite read that either. Okay, well, at least I've got those valves out now. That's good. And Got oil all over my hands. Lovely. Never mind. Okay, well, that's a bit of progress. Nice blue chassis. I like that. Quite good nick. There ain't too many rust spots, so that's good news as well. Just checking the transformer out now. I was a little puzzled by the wiring on this because it's marked two sets of voltages, and I thought, well, surely the field winding doesn't go to the um, main side but I think it's certainly the markings 200, 214, 229 and 245 I'm concerned with here. The manual um, does tell you what the resistance should be but this is going up and down a bit. I wonder if it's something to do with this little... ah yeah it is loose actually. Let's have a look. 200 volts. 26 ohms. And what's this manual say? Uh, 26 ohms. Well that's cool. 245 says 33 to 32 that's 33 ohms oh that's good so actually I've got a, a good primary then question is just working out the secondary um, okay well the obvious thing to do was um, connect to chassis because that's what one windings on um, secondary uh, 2.30 and 2.10 if 
if I've got it right, and I've got 200 and 237. Oh, well, that's good. So, got a good primary there. Uh, secondary, should I say. So, that's looking good. Well, I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, what it appears is we have four wires here. Transformer's got a primary and a secondary, and it looks like one of the wires going to the humbucket, uh, sorry, the field coil that's coming off the transformer um, and shared, and that sort of disappears around here. There's there's the coil and well there's I think this must have been tape at some time it's sort of come off so I'll see if I can get a better shot just zoom in a little bit more there we go I don't know if you can see the coil winding now there we go right so the next thing is to uh, zoom out now it says 39 on the speaker so Maybe this is a uh, 39 model. Right, let's just clip onto there. I'm just trying to work out which is the... Yeah, that's connected. Yeah, you can see there's a, an additional humbucking coil underneath here. Um, that's quite thick winding, that's in series with the speaker. So there's the humbucking coil there. I think that's the primary. Let's have a look. Now am I going to get a reading? No. Oh no. So, well, have you got the wrong cable? I think I've got the right one. Have a look at that. Ah, yes, I've got 306 ohms. So, now I've got the right connection. Yeah, so that's 306 I'm seeing. Across there, and as far as I can tell, that is the secondary transformer. What's it say in the manual? It says T2. Is that labeled T2? Yes, it is. But it's actually saying 140. Mm. Okay, and I've got 300. Well, why would that be? Um, Maybe I need to look a little bit more into this diagram, whether it's right. Uh, L24. 1400 ohms. Good grief. So, okay. Let's just... Yep, that's connected to there. I'll put that on there. And this wire that's very, very delicate. No. No continuity on the field coil, oh dear, that's bad news, no, on 20k, um, oh, ok, um, yeah. so it looks like I might have an open field coil, but given that other cable sort of floating round, I'm try and get a Close up shot of that. Okay, there's a slightly better shot for you. Yeah, there's a bit of cardboard here and tape, and I guess that's what solders to the um, wire. I wonder if that's got off. That is very, very fine looking cable on that speaker. Um, and that, oh yes, I can see the cable clearly coming out. Whether it's still soldered to it is another story, but uh, yeah. So yeah, just there with my screwdriver is just the fine cable. I don't think it's going to show up even in eye definition, but that's where it is. Right, so I need to look at this field coil before I go anywhere. Okay, I'm just looking at the IF cans here, and this strange tag board is, is really weird. Um, there's some auxiliary components on the tag board, and also there's the IF cans. 
they're supposed to be 6 ohms but on one side I'm seeing 6 ohm and not the other and the same with this one though what I have noticed is let's see if I can get the camera angle right so you can see this um, there's a capacitor there it looks like a waxy so the top's going to have to come off this can to get at that but there's a couple of bolts so maybe what I'll do is I'll take the can off the top and just see what's inside to see if that's why I'm not getting a continuity well I've taken the cans off so we can see what's going on um, good news on the IF me making silly schoolboy mistakes um, obviously this is a grid connection so even though there was four connections down there I was looking at the wrong one so having a look at across these capacitors uh, which got fixed capacitors on six ohms that's good this one also 6 ohms, so that's good. There is a wax capacitor down here. Um, that looks a bit full of excess. Also resistors, I believe, what are resistors. So I need to look at those. Um, these ones here. Um, I've got my facts right. This is an aerial coil. Input stage. There is so many coupled stages for the aerial it's quite quite surprising this one I believe is the oscillator and if you can see this mirror imaging that's a bit difficult sometimes with the monitor um, that, that I believe is the shortwave input uh, tune circuit as well so plenty going on here but at least the IFs are good I haven't tried measuring the tuning coils quite yet I'll uh, try and fathom out how to do that in a simple way but just be careful I don't knock these because that would be uh, fatal if I did but uh, yeah well obviously the speaker's faulty with the field coil but hopefully we can solve that if not I'm going to have to replace the speaker but I'd rather not um, it's got a free gang capacitor now I thought well it's only got five valves it hasn't got a tuned RS stage but it seems to me that uh, what's happening is um, there's one tuning capacitor for short wave and another tuning capacitor used for the long and medium so that's an unusual way of doing it but uh, I'm going to have to try and work out the differences between the A48 and the A46 so I can identify all these trimmers um, otherwise alignment will be difficult if we get that far but anyway at least we've made some progress and uh, to see uh, if anything else has opened the circuit before I proceed any further. Well, testing the input aerial coil is quite easy. Um, that must be short wave, 0.47 ohms. 1.65, I bet that's medium wave. Um, 9.9 .9 ohms, I bet that's long wave. So. That was quite easy to check by simply connecting to the aerial input. So I guess possibly I should be able to check some more by uh, connecting to the uh, grid of the uh, mixer oscillator valve. And uh, I doubt that will let me see the other side. Anyway, a bit of uh, fiddling about. I've connected to the grid cap and the AGC line because as AGC apply to the grid of the mixer valve so it's isolated so I've connected to the bottom of the IF which is also on the AGC and I can see 0.37, 4.7 and 12 ohms so I think there's a good chance that aerial coils are mostly intact and I haven't checked all of them but I'm more inclined to proceed now with this, this uh, radio um, after the head fiasco of the Dynatron tape recorder, I'm sort of inclined to uh, be a little bit more careful now. I'm just uh, testing the oscillator coil if I'm working out the right place to connect, and uh, certainly there's some change there, although we're around 20k. But I think this one is the other side of the oscillator 4 ohm 2 ohm 0.35 ohm so yeah 
I think there's a good chance that all the wound components are in a good state. So that, that's good news. So I'm just looking at the uh, input, aerial input circuit here. Um, short wave just seems to be a straight through transformer, but uh, long and medium wave they have an additional coupling here to an additional tuning capacitor so you've got effectively two tuned circuits here uh, you've got one on the aerial side and one before the grid so that's a interesting uh, circuit arrangement one I've not seen before um, so that obviously gives it higher selectivity on long and medium wave bands but not on short wave which surprised me uh, with 465 kilohertz IF, I thought you would have, but uh, yeah, that's um, one of those strange things. But uh, there we go. That's basically how the front end works. That's how I was testing the uh, coils earlier. Just looking at a few other jobs that need doing. There's rubber mounts for the tuning scale and the tuning capacitor, and you can see from how on the hoof that is that the rubber has deteriorated fairly it's it's gone pretty hard here as you can see yeah it's gone pretty hard and not particularly nice at all so I'm getting a bit closer there we go yeah and there's a further rubber mount just here and that ha that has deteriorated fairly so that's not need going to be need to be changed. Just gently lift it up onto its front if I can. The uh, scale has three lamps, one for each uh, wave band. So that's going to have to be all replaced because I guess that's going to short be shortening inside that piece of uh, cotton tube. So that's all got to be replaced as well. So yeah, quite a bit to do, but. I'm thinking to start with the uh, tuning capacitors first. Uh, sorry, not tuning capacitors, the wax capacitors first. I was going to look at uh, restuffing those, so that should make a nice mess of wax everywhere. I've got the first uh, capacitor out. I thought, oh, we'll give it a leakage test. So I'm going to give it full 500 volts and. Yeah, it's about 400k, the looks of it. If you can see that clearly, but yeah, that's fairly leaky, isn't it? Um, so they definitely need doing. Oh, it's actually going down. It's 300k now. I think it's going to be one of my moments in my life where I ask, is this a good idea? How much of a mess am I going to get in? Out. Well, it's built in the wax. So uh, is that a million four the right way to go about it? I ask myself. I did, did some on the wartime radio, so I'm kind of hoping it'll work. I'm just going to leave that there where I grabbed a pair of pliers. Maybe I need to take the uh, take the nozzle off that so blows a bit wider, but no. These are dull. Well. Yeah, no wonder I struggled to get these out. Um, 
getting the light correctly. There's sort of it's not focusing. Come on. There's sort of a plug in the end with teeth, and that was soldered onto the capacitors, which have got a bit of foil coming out each end. So that's a little bit different to the one on the wartime radio. No wonder I'm struggling to pull it out. I was wondering about bunging them back in and soldering the capacitor between them. I'm just not sure at this moment whether that would be a good idea or not. Will it go back in? Um, uh, maybe not, because the ends were folded over. Maybe if I pulled the ends out and straightened them up, maybe they would. Um, Mm, lighting's not the best in here at the moment, but uh, yeah, I have to think about this. Right, yep, that's in focus, isn't it? Just about right. I'm uh, put some tape round it, and I'm just going to uh, push it in and probably leave it at that. Yeah. Spare some to focus against. So yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do actually, and probably not bother with putting lots of wax in. Um, I've got one here that's easily to peel apart. So there we go. That's the foil. And there's a foil on the side as well. That's more than one layer then. There you go. And keep it in shot. And there's a foil. And the foil under another layer. Hey. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's like grease proof paper, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Oop, I've managed to rip it, never mind. <laughs> I wasn't going to reuse it anyway. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it's still coming apart. Oh, to my surprise, there we go. <laughs> right. yeah. Make your own capacitor. Mm. Well, I've just cut the capacitor bank out just to have a look at it. And, uh, too fun. Um, what is that? Is that wax? Is it pitch? I think, is it a combination of the two? Yeah, that looks a bit of fun. Ooh. Um, it's not hard. I reckon that's pitch. Uh, yeah, that's sort of, is that indicating someone's gone boom before? Looking at it, is that some foil or something? Right, yeah, this potentially messy, doesn't it? Okay, well, heat, I suppose, preferably not while it's inside. 